imagine a funeral convention to be like. For funeral directors or for people in this field. Well, Customers. Yeah. I, I don't know. It would be hard to describe. I, I can't imagine. You know, I would imagine a funeral convention would be like 3,000 people that look like a cross between Bella Lugosi and Wyatt Earp. Uh, it's funny, at, at home, a lot of people that will ask my friends, because we're always in a coat and tie, and they'll say, uh, does he sleep in that coat and tie, or does he mow the yard in his coat and tie? We're probably a little different from your average funeral director, I guess. Well, first of all, walking into the convention, for us music producer guys, it was a little spooky. I mean, it's uh, Halloween time, and the booth over here has uh, cobwebs and Elvira look-alike, which I thought was <laughs> kind of wacky. <laughs> This is one of our new caskets, the angel's papa, so that the family can take them home. If you're a golfer, you can get a, you can get a casket with your, with your golf club's insignia inside the panel. If this is a real body in here, you should never put food on there. That's sort of gross. It's sort of wigging me out having that on there now. <laughs> it's a certified high-quality diamond. It's made from the carbon of the deceased. Do I say it again? Do you believe in life after death? That's a tough one. I used to go to hospitals to visit like friends, and now it's like you have to really be careful doing that because they don't know whether you're coming to see them personally or whether you're drumming up business to remind them that you're a funeral director and can handle them in the worst case scenario. 